Well, we've come to the beach to watch the sunset and uh, have something to eat and drink. Well, do you it's know a very what, special what put happy the birthday, Fiona. Yeah, I survived another year. So did you. Do you know why I fancy lobster tonight? Is because a couple of weeks ago I saw it in Aldi and it was only 10 euros for a big lobster pre-cooked and I thought oh they'll have them in all the time I'll get one of them for my birthday and they've bloody sold out so um you got to you got to it's in my mind now you know when you, you well, think next time of you food, see one grab it and throw it in the freezer I haven't had lobster since I was a kid but in um Stornoway the locals used to catch them all the time and we'd have lobster every single day because they were giving them to us in fact I remember they had rubber bands around their claws because they're quite nippy. And um, me and my sisters racing them. We got them, my mother put them all in the bath so they couldn't escape. And we put them on the kitchen floor, put them at one end of the, the, the house. And we were like cheering our lobster on. And, the, and the, they were, they're very uncooperative, you know, they were looking wherever they could go. I love them. I think they're amazing creatures racing across the seabed. I don't normally eat them because I feel bad, you know, about boiling them alive and stuff, but I believe mm. it's more humane these days. But in Scotland, I suppose, if they're catching them in a little village, they just give them away rather than... Yeah, we used to have fresh back. rainbow trout, uh, crab, lobster, and um, what was the other thing they were always bring? Smoked salmon and fresh salmon all the time, all the time. In fact, so much we had to give it away or throw it in the bin because we were going home. There was nowhere to put it. Well, if they're still alive, you could put them back in the lock, couldn't you? You see? The sea. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, they come out the sea. Yeah, I've... Orinse is coastal. Been to Orinse on my flight, Sim. Oh, God. You've been everywhere on your flight, Sim. Not quite everywhere, but I'm working on it. Have anyway. you ever flown down this beach? Loads of times, yeah. Have you? Okay. Okay. I've been to the most bizarre places in the world, but I, I tend to stick to the UK at the moment because I've downloaded it. Extra scenery for the UK, and it's much better than the default scenery. Yeah, you had Scotland, didn't you? I downloaded Scotland. Best ever, best ever download was Scotland. So I'm binging on Scotland. No, I'm in the Isle of Islay at the moment. That's a really big... It's proper maverick territory, that Scotland. I mean, that's another thing when we were up there on holiday. We'd hear the jets going over, fighter jets. Yeah, well, you can get away with flying low there and doing training and stuff, and there aren't many people to complain, but and you try that in England, I mean, the, the I phones would, like, light up, wouldn't they? With complaints and moaners, so... Flying low over my house, they rattled me plant pots and all my tiles are falling off and my house is falling down. I can't stand the noise. Oh, there's a, there's a complaints department at the RAF, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why sit down, madam? Yeah, I'll take a They've got their own little aviation authority for Scotland, low flying they were, complaints. They were coming from so far away, they were there and gone in a second you just you get the boom round the hills yeah but there's not many places they come from <laughs> well lossy mouth they I'm all guessing. come from lossy mouth <laughs> <laughs> which is quite a long way away for us from our inside to go to the complaints department yeah well you just pick up a phone and eat. Do you know i can't wait to see this lobster years ago i went into a there was a fabulous restaurant in brighton called china gardens i remember china gardens it was yeah, awesome yeah. and i went in there back in the 90s with a a boyfriend and this guy looked like a tramp he, like a homeless person came in and he ordered lobster champagne and he had big fat cigars and he couldn't stop laughing the whole time he was gorging on lobster and champagne and then he had a cognac and we were looking at him thinking I wonder what the story is there I wonder if he's you know just won the lottery or maybe he's a millionaire who's been shipwrecked and he just thought fuck it I'm going China Gardens it was awesome and I they must have known him, otherwise they'd have thrown him out, wouldn't they? They go, oh, it's, it's, he's a millionaire, him. <laughs> no, they didn't care. They didn't care there. If he had the money, and he'd shown he had money, I don't know, maybe he was a homeless person, and someone had given him 70 quid or something, and he thought, sod it, I'm going to go and have a slap up me. I've got another seafood story. <laughs> oh, go on, Fiona. Tell us your seafood story. There's another restaurant in Brighton called English's. 
I know that as well. Very famous seafood. Very hoi It's down the Steen, isn't it? Down the sort of you know, it's down, end of the lanes. down the lanes. Yeah, it's yeah, near, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's near Druid's Head, sort of yeah, neck of the woods. Anyway, I've been in there a couple of times and every time I go in there, someone orders the lobster and it comes on a big silver platter and it's very impressive. And I often thought, well, I don't know whether I'm going to order that. My mum said to me, you can't go wrong. Order anything you like, you can't go wrong. So I ordered jelly deal and it turned up they said you want it hot or cold I thought oh I didn't know you could have it hot or cold I said I'll have it cold it I swear to god it looked like um well it looked like a hard on on a plate I don't mean to be crude I had to say to them take it away I can't it's always a delicacy oh, down the I east end, the isn't lobster. it? There's this guy on the other table to me and he had this huge lobster platter. It was spectacular. So if I ever go back to Englishes, and I'm you, having the lobster. What made you, what possessed you to choose jelly deal? I don't know, I'd never had it and I'd heard them on East Enders going, you know, Pete Beal, oh, a little bit of jelly deal and all that. And I thought, oh, go on then, I'll try that. Never again, never again. I mean, I might as well have tried biting into my own arm. I just couldn't do it's it. It's all they could catch in London, isn't it, in one time, because <laughs> of all the sewage. <laughs> I'll catch you later. Hello, everybody. Look oh, at that. My hands Whoa. Sunset. Sunset See? on the beach. The sun does shine out my arse after all. <laughs> I, I've known that for years. Bussica. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers, Graham. Thank you very much for all the birthday wishes, everybody. Especially Foxy. Um, yeah. I love that video today. Thank you very much. And um, the vintage read. Thank you very much today. And there are a couple of ladies, Lisa Anne and Lisa Junior. I promised I'd do a shout out. So I've got all of them out of the way. Let the evening commence. We have come here and I'm hoping to have kind of lobster. I think it's more langoustine. It's not as big as lobster. Yeah, yeah. And the sunset is in about 15 minutes. The sun should go down. So we thought we'd come here for gin and tonics and I'm having a steak. And We've had um, a really nice weekend actually. Watch the sunset. <laughs> it's only just stopped tipping it down. It, it has, it's been dreadful for about a fortnight, really. It has. A week solid, a week solid wind and rain. I mean, the garden was trashed. I've been picking up <laughs> lemons every morning, running out in the rain to pick them up and go back in. And we had one that was skewered, wasn't it, on one of your Oh yeah, pots. yeah, I mean, what's the chance? I saw a YouTuber trying to cut fruit with by spinning playing cards, and this lemon had fallen and it had just spiked itself right on the end of one of my square plant pots. It, it, what are the chances of that? <laughs> oh my goodness. I cut that half off and I squeezed the other half. <laughs> so we're gonna um, eat well, get pissed, so that the video will progress as the, as the evening goes on. How's your gin and tonic, Donny? Going down a storm, I think I'll need another one in a minute. They're lovely big gin and tonics. And we've been watching, I'm, I'm getting through Blacklist, yeah, season we're getting... six we're up to we're nearly the end of season six and um oh and i want to say happy birthday to gertie rude who's another youtuber i'm going to put a link in the description of her channel oh she's got a brilliant channel <laughs> we were crying with laughter this week it was some of the stuff she does is really she really does, funny she does parodies and we have been Ru pissing it, uh, ourselves off yeah, it's Gertie, G-E-R-T-Y, a separate word, R-O-O-D. And we have yeah. been crying with laughter. She does parodies of people and uh, <laughs> it makes some people really seriously angry. I suppose they would. Do you know what? If I, if any, I would be so flattered if someone did a parody of me, like an impersonation. I, I think I'd say, come on, let's go live together and we could have a row over it. I think that would be awesome. But anyway, so yeah. Mm. For what it's worth. <laughs> and um, oh, it's on the top of the hill. All is well. Move, no. Move your head to one side. It's going to go down in, in a few seconds. We'll watch it. If you move, I'm not moving out, anywhere, out and you shot. can't make me. I'm too heavy. Move out the shot. You're missing the sunset. Oh. I'm not missing anything, Graham. The sunsets every night. We're so lucky to be down here. It's so lovely. It's gone. It's almost gone. And no children. No. One's gone snowboarding oh, again and the other get? one what did you get from egypt you got a birthday yeah, the other one's from in egypt. egypt at the moment faith thank you very much for my I've, latest i've been wearing it 
this will go with my latest collection of tiaras i think i have my it's very sort of snow queen isn't it They'll all, they'll all be looking at me in here. We had to, by the way, we had to book out the whole restaurant to make sure there would be no riffraff next to us. We didn't, like, she's lying. Like Wimbledon, <laughs> like Megan did for Wimbledon. I think this video is gonna be another one, a bit like a live, and it, I know it's gonna go south. Oh, and thank you, YouTube. I got a lovely email from YouTube this morning. I cannot elaborate, but thank you very much. I know I've got managers who watch this channel, and that was the nicest thing to wake up to on my birthday was that particular message. It, it just depends on YouTube. People say, why, you know, why won't YouTube listen to this, that and the other? It just depends on the individual employee that you get, I suppose, and how they view yeah, the situation or sort of whatever. Big channel, it's very difficult to manage it's it, huge. I would imagine. I don't know how they could. They've got actually. bots managing most of it, I'm sure. Initially bot yeah, initially it's an automated AI yeah, yeah. that deals with you and then you give further information and then you eventually a person of human yeah, review yeah. and it just depends on who the reviewer is and yeah. lots and lots and lots of gossip I see everything is building building oh, building. oh yes yes I wouldn't like to be in certain people's shoes when it all kicks off because someone was saying to me today what do I think the big story is that's gonna break soon that Lady C has been referring to now I have no idea but I said, you know, I mean, let's say, for example, it was a surrogacy thing. I don't think that would be a big thing, actually. For the majority of planet Earth, most people would say, oh, they couldn't have kids, they used a surrogate. But if it's the troll story, well, everyone on planet Earth, all 7.4 billion people, I'll wager, have been trolled. And there'll be very little sympathy for that. I see all two whitewashed in the background. I was trying to touch the screen but if the sun has gone down apparently if you do this it starts raining does it yeah or you do that i never then knew it, that it does it sometimes when i'm talking to trevor you know trevor will go and it starts an raining on, it. on the thing and i think what's that it's crazy anyway yes this is lovely so we will we'll continue the chat um probably be quite bladdered by the, the time the next bit comes up I can't reach it then. My favourite entry cot. What are you on, darling? A little winner. See? You. How's your, your, your lobster thing? Oh, he's lovely. Both of them are. Split. Hey, look at this. Split personality. See? That's what it used to look like. That's what it's like now. <laughs> what is it you're saying about not wanting to be filmed eating? Oh. I don't fucking care. <laughs> well, things are progressing very well this end. Here we go. Langoustine. And I'll just... Oh, my camera leg keeps collapsing. Cheers, everybody. I'm just. Oh, can you control that? Oh, yeah. I shall you. control the camera. I'm, I'm having the uh, entrico, as they say in Spain. No, it's entricot. Entricot. They pronounce every consonant and um, oh, do they? vowel. Mm. Well, we're not going to film us eating because that would be really sad. No, I've got to let my lobsters close. Well, they're big prawns, they're langoustines. Because I did ask if they have the lobster, and they said. Um, no, because it is langoustine, 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 then gambus when it gets like little a prawn. So, uh, and you've got, have you got chips or something coming from that? No, I said compotatus <laughs> fritz, and uh, that's what they finished up with. Anyway, I don't mind because let's face it, the the steak is the is is the thing that we want, isn't it? Oh, this is the life on the the Costa. What are we the sun, on? The what sun's gone down. It's very. It has. It's I tell you what I love is when the when it gets dark the lights of Al Al the Al is um, the biggest European port. It's just over there. Everything comes into Al It's a massive, massive fact, container base. On the blacklist they mentioned Gibraltar. Apparently Raymond Reddington filters and launders all his money through Gibraltar. They mentioned so, it so, so do lots times. of other people. 
they reckon there's more money goes through that rock than anywhere else, even Monaco, and a lot goes through Monaco. God bless Gibraltar. I wouldn't actually. know. God bless our chief minister. I love that guy. Fabian. Here's to Fabian. And Gibraltar, by the way, is just there, but we can't see it at the moment. It's behind oh, we'll the toilets. Bit, we can film a bit of that towards the end. We can. Anyway, I'm going to get on with my food. Oh, I'll catch you I'll later. No. Oh, I can just eat, can't you? Well, you can carry on talking, darling. There you go. Okay. Well, are we going to get a copyright strike on this music? We're right in, under a speaker. We'll find out later, won't we? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Anyway, gorging on. It's like a live, but without mm. the questions. Exactly. I'm so. Yeah, I know. I have to get round to the comments. There you go. No, you're not going to get out of uh, people not seeing you eating. But well, I don't want people <laughs> watching me eat. Come on. Man up. It's not like you're wearing anorak and live in your mother's basement, is it? It's Fuck's sake. Way, right, so we all know this is going to go south before the video's over sort of put my tiara on and everyone looks at me like a, I'm a weirdo. It's your nice, birthday. nice to be a weirdo. Um, anyway, oh, <laughs> camera legs on my <laughs> gin and tonic glass. <laughs> anyway, um, years ago, we came to this uh, place, it's called a Chiringuito. It's a beach bar, basically, a posh, posh bar. It's very Luna posh. bar. Mm. This is the Luna bar. I'm not filming you, Graham, because I know you're a little bitch and you don't want to be filmed eating. No, I don't. If you want to see me eating, go to Graham's channel, because he just filmed me woofing these, uh, these langoustine. Um, so what anyway. anything else are you full? I mean, I'm actually quite full. You can have something else if you want. Oh, I'm alright, dude. Do you want some steak? No, I'm fine. I've got other plans for my stomach. Okay. Champagne waiting for you at home, darling. Oh, you naughty. Anyway, so yeah, years and years ago, um, when the kids were, oh, I don't know, they'd have been about 10 and 12, something like that. And we used to work uh, more or less seven days a week. And at the weekends, well, we'd have one day, six days a week. Um, Graham would have the Saturday off and I'd have the Sunday off. So at the weekends with the kids, one or the other of us was looking after them. It was very rare in the early days of Dolphin Safari that we would have the whole day off together, especially when the weather's nice. Because the only times we got off together were in the winter. We finish in November, then the rain comes invariably and bad weather and it's cold and you don't want to go to the beach or do anything. And then we wouldn't go back until beginning of March. <laughs> and so um, we took turns of the looking after the kids at the weekend. And, and um, God forgive me, Tim. <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but... When his gearbox broke on Goldfin in 2014, I think it was might have been 2013, we all cheered because it meant the boat's out of action, we all get the day off, and it happened right in the height of the season, like July, August, which is just dreadful for Tim and Conchi. But we just thought, take the kids to the beach. The kids were thrilled. We thought we came to this beach. And... Um, They've got like all uh, beach. Um, what are they called? Oh, don't, don't. You know the story I'm going to tell. <laughs> oh my God. There was a member of staff at Dolphin Safari who was a, um, a character. <laughs> Let's put it that way. The guy can empty a bar. He just walks. He's, oh God, I think he's actually dead now. God, God rest his soul. Um, he was one of the best sales reps we ever had at Dolphin Safari. And um, the reason he was really good at selling tickets is because he was really relentless. He just wouldn't let people go. Um, and he kind of drove me up the wall. He drove everyone up the wall, actually. So Tim said, gearbox is blown, can't do any work today. The mechanic's gonna fit a new gearbox tomorrow. So you've all got the day off. I said to Graham, let's take the kids to the beach. Finally, we've got a hot sunny day. 
went down on the sun loungers. You pay extra for a sun lounger. And they used to come and deliver the gin and tonic. Brought a couple of gin and tonics. I'm there, kids stripped off. They're playing in the sea. Everybody's happy. And um, suddenly I heard this, this voice in the distance go, eight, 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 because that's how he would talk. And I said to Graham, oh my God, tell me that is not what I think it is. And yes, it was. Yes, it was, because of course we got the day off, but so did he got the day off. And he came to join us on the beach. Well, normally my kids, they, they just wouldn't when they were little. I couldn't prize them away from the beach. They would uh, they, they kick off and complain, but as soon as they heard his voice, I, I said, get dressed, get dried. They toweled themselves off, <laughs> got dressed, packed all their stuff up, went, Mum, let's go boat. So I left Graham, God forgive me, With orders on the beach, to get rid of him. With orders to get rid, I said to him, get rid of him, get rid of him. Anyway, <laughs> me and the kids went back to the boat over there and all was well and we were watching horror movies and stuff and ice cream and everything I thought where's your father he's been ages what the fuck's going on finally Graham turned up just before the sunset <laughs> seen him come down the pontoon I said thank god you got rid of him and he went it's not that simple it's not that simple Fiona shall I let you finish the rest of the story or little precious princess too precious about eating on her. I'm still eating Fiona, you finished oh, You're still story. eating. I said, what the fuck do you mean? He said he's gone to get some beers and he's coming to the boat to keep his company and so he did until three mm. o'clock in the fucking morning. Oh my God. So our family day out was um, ruined. Ruined, wasn't yeah. it? Ooh, jet ski. Tell her about, about the story of the jet ski that rocked up on the beach and the fellas went running away. Oh God, yeah, yeah, on the Saturdays, but it was just, well, on the, uh, yeah, I think I had Saturday off and you had Sunday off. I, you know, I can't remember which way round it was, but anyway, <laughs> on my days off, I used to bring the kids round to this particular beach and uh, one day, it's packed here in the summer, packed. Um, one particular day, um, there was a jet ski chase with smugglers, I'd, I don't know, or maybe immigrants, or uh, I don't know what it was. And um, there were two three-seater jet skis with a lot of people who appeared to have packages on them, and they razzed up onto the beach. Both my kids were like, oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> and um, the Guardia Seville boat followed them, but obviously it couldn't beach itself because it was a boat. The guys beached the jet skis, jumped off, ran straight across the road, main road here in front of moving traffic, dodging them and jumping over car bonnets and stuff. And both kids were like, it's like GTA, GTA, GTA. And um, they disappeared and these two jet skis were left with fingerprints and stuff, which of course the Guardia Seville and the police wanted. And the Guardia Seville were on their speedboat quite impotently with their speaker saying, don't touch the jet skis. Nobody touch the jet skis. It's a crime scene. Well, everyone on the beach went and they were taking selfies on the jet ski. The kids were like, can we have a selfie taken on the jet ski? Oh, they were like, this is awesome. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, the evening goes on. I'm actually quite proud of myself. Why don't you have That's a little a... walk on the beach, Fiona? Yeah, oh, fucking well, yeah. I might even go for a jog. A bit of or go set. down the gym or some do some shit like that soon. Yeah. <laughs> no, I will. I will. I'm gonna get some trainers and I'm gonna I'm gonna train. And I'm gonna do yoga and no, nothing no, you're nothing not. against yoga. No, you're I not. am, I am, I am. Just not tonight. Mm. How's your steak? Very nice. Good. I'm uh, coming to the end of it. Well, you can see where this video is going anyway. It continues this conversation later. Okay, well, yes. Stories about this bar. We've been here we, on and off for, for donkey's years. We must go back 10 years or more. 
11 years, right? No. Every Yes. I've got the pictures of the kids. Oh, thank you very much. Come and buddy. take two more. No. Are you kidding? We moved, we moved to Spain in 2013. 2010. No, we moved to Spain in, we were in Jib before. We moved to Spain in 2013. Oh, right, right. And we years. were okay. the first customers to come to this Chiringuito. Well, it, it wasn't was this very thing. Different. It was like a little shed, wasn't it? They used to take it away every, every, every winter. Not like a shed, it was fabulous. I actually preferred it the way it was before with sofas well, anyway, everywhere. It's really nice now. It's it's really nice place. Oh, and the night we turned up, one of the people we were suing was in here and he was on another sofa and he actually said, I'm not spying on you. I'm so sorry. I'm here. I know you're suing me. <laughs> Do you remember that? I yeah. remember that. <laughs> the guy who begins with B. He said, I've been waiting for this Cheringuito to open for years. I'm so sorry. I'm here. Anyway, they, you should take the shed away every winter. I mean, it's just beach. And then come spring, they put it back, and after a while, they just knocked that on the head and just left it here, and then it got bigger, so it's here. But one day, this guy rocked up from uh, in Gibraltar at Dolphin Safari, and he knocked on the door, and he said, "I see a sign on the door says uh, staff wanted." Well, I'd like to, I'd like a job, and. Uh, I hadn't spoken to Oh my god, you're not telling the story. I serious you you are seriously gonna twist it, aren't you? No, I'm not gonna twist it. But this guy turned up and it Fiona had spoke to him and uh, anyway, I, I was coming in at the end of it and he said uh, he was in the Marines and I went, Oh here we go. Another one. <laughs> and uh, he he really was. He really was. He was in the SPS, or he passed the course for the SPS. Yeah. Kathia. Kathia. More gin and tonics. So, this guy, this guy rocked up and he wanted a job, and he got a job, he got a job in the end. Because, um, you know, you get people rocking up every day at the Dolphin Safari. And they're, they're full of shit. Honestly, they they come. There's such oh bullshit. God, yeah. Anyway, this guy was super genuine, and we didn't realise at the time. Anyway, he rocked up and he goes, "I was in the Marines for 18 years." And we thought, "Really?" Was anyway, he? We, was he? Yeah. Oh my God! I used to call him Princess. <laughs> he was in the Royal Marines, right? Anyway, cut long story short, he got a job on the crew with. Um, with us. I'm not going to say his name because he's still out there and he's dead hard and I don't want him to beat me up. <laughs> so, anyway. Don't worry, I'll protect you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I trained him up to be captain and he was captain for a few years, but his wife was in the RAF based at Gibraltar. I won't say what she did, but she was quite high up. Anyway. She was the base commander. <laughs> she was on the cover of the magazine, all the magazines. Yes, she was. Anyway, I and wasn't. I got, wasn't. And she got arrested. <laughs> she did. She did. But that's another story. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, I've well, thrown you, haven't you, I? You've, you've thrown my story completely because there's, <laughs> it's, it's going to go off into like loads of different tangents now. But he, he was here for the duration of her posting and he was like an army wife but he wasn't he was anyway I, I started chatting to him and he was um he was part of the wives club he was because he was um his, his wife was the, the the RAF officer and he was a sergeant in the marines right and it was dead funny and uh when he left we bought him a mirror because he was dead vain and we had it engraved, well I had it engraved with uh, something like mirror, mirror, in my hand, who's the fairest on the land or something like that. And then he went to the last wives. He actually used to go to be with all the wives. No, and it was, it was on the roof of the Sunborn and I was doing quayside mm. ticket sales and I kept getting this like glint in my eye and it was really hurting and I thought, 
Where the bloody hell's that beam coming from? And it was him <laughs> on the roof of the sun. Yeah, but sun it, was a, it was like a compact. And he was using the mirror to fucking have a, a go at me it like wasn't an owl. the mirror. Ant. She bought him a compact. <laughs> That's right. And it was like, you know, the, the women open it up and they've, they've got the mirror and they've got the, 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 the powder shit that they put on the face. Right, well, this was a double mirror. And you uh, <laughs> see, always you take the piss out of him for being vain and stuff like this. Well, he it? said one day. He took it really well. Right, the, the guy was fucking double fucking hard. He was really, really cool guy. At the time, I was in control of operations, you know, and he was one of our skippers at one point. He was he also was. crew. And he said, I need a day off, and it was really inconvenient. And I said, what, What's the problem, Roscoe? And he said, I've got a bit of psoriasis under my eyes. And I said, um, well, so it's cosmetic. All right, anyone out there with psoriasis, shoot me. Um, but I said, okay, you've got a bit of psoriasis. You know, I have to go on the boat with period pains and um, a lot of the other crew, you know, some of the crew actually suffer from seasickness and want to vomit all the time. And it, I said, is it causing you any pain? And he went, no. It's just, um, I don't like people seeing it. I said, well, it's cosmetic, isn't it? You know, could you You're not... going for a facial, that's what she said. <laughs> he said, fuck off. He was winding him up. Oh, God. I'm now sure. we didn't punch you out, I never know. And there's nothing I, I could have done about and it. And I used to, I, when he used to get off the uh, dolphin boat, I used yeah, to go, how was your dolphin trip, princess? Yeah, yeah. After you ladies and all that, oh god. Yeah. But yeah, this, this fella came in and I met him first and we were desperate for a new captain at Dolphin Safari, desperate. Um, we have Graham and we have Tim and we needed another a captain so they could have more days off and yeah, holidays yeah, yeah. and stuff. And this fella walked in with a portfolio and he opened it up. He even had STCWs in machine guns and security. He did. And I looked at it and I didn't said... I didn't know there was an STCW in, in no, machine I guns. No, I didn't. I didn't. I mean, there's secu various security yeah, ones. Yeah. And our old captain, the point, Port, um, Roy Stanbrook, he was a master of STCWs. He had every... Mm. Anyway, I'm looking through the pages of this and I'm thinking, this guy's either a bullshitter. And we've had loads of them. Yeah. You won't believe how many bullshits oh we've had with stories yeah, about things. So when someone tells you they were in the SAS, for example, you think, oh, where are you? Oh, right, OK. No, that's not the most but, shocking, because coming from Brighton, I've heard all the bullshit about people who've been in the... Do you remember army. the guy who, who was coming into 24 million when he was... Oh, yeah, he was a lost egg of the Queen, the late, Our Late Majesty, the, reckon he was a, a cross with, with Martin McGuinness. We something. thought he was a normal Never guy mind. and we took him for a beer and, yeah, apparently he, the IRA were going to kill him because he was oh, he was genetically modified from the from one of the Queen's eggs and an SAS soldier. Anyway, and, uh, oh, Roscoe, we, we were like, oh. I'm, checking out, I'm checking out his CV and I'm looking at this thinking this is, I think this guy's genuine and talking to him and he was quite like laid back and I, I thought this guy's for real um, and I said actually, because he only came in for crew originally and I said actually well, we could do with the captain and I think you're captain material but you'll have to do the local boat masters and uh, all that and um, he said, I said, come back tomorrow and you can meet the captain. So he came back the next day, dead reliable, and they weren't there. They were out at sea, or we'd had another sort of crisis of one manner or another at Dolphin Safari. Um, I said, I'll come back and meet Conchi. And the next day he came back and for some reason Conchi wasn't there. I mean, there's just a crisis after crisis after crisis at Dolphin Safari. Eventually... Um, I'd said to him, come back and you can meet Graham, who's the other captain, Tim, the owner, and Conchie. And all three of them were there in the office. And I told them, I said, this guy's come in and he's got a ton of STCWs. And they had all, including you, said, I bet he's a Walter Mitty and a bullshitter. And he wasn't. <laughs> and he came in and they were all dead rude to him. I said, oh, this is... I wasn't rude to him. Yes, you were. Roscoe, you, you and Roscoe, had, uh, you and Tim had just come back off a hideous no-do where everyone puked. There were no dolphins. There was a string of complaints. And um, this guy, after we got rid of all the customers, he just turned up and it was pissing down. I think it was March, April. And I said, oh, this is Roscoe. And Tim sort of said, well, who the fuck is Roscoe? What, what do you want, a fucking award or something like that? And uh, Conchie was like, you are nothing to me. And you just ignored him. 
I said, this is Graham, my husband, he's the captain, and it, it, you just looked at him and went, mm. And um, he was overwhelmed by the rudeness, and he looked at me and I said, I must apologise for my colleagues. I can assure you on a better day, it'll be more receptive. And he came back again the next day and you were all impressed with him and you took him on. And he was way overqualified for Dolphin Safari. And then it was, Tim said, I found him and took him under my wing. And you said, I found him and took him under my wing. To give Conchia due, she never said that. And Roscoe said to both Graham and Tim, bollocks, you were all dead rude to me. It was only Fiona that was nice. I trained him and up I and he was, nice. he was captain. He was yeah. captain for a long while. A couple until, of years, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it turned out that he... Um, I said to him, how come if you were in the Marines? He said he, said he started off in the Paris and then he got bored with the Paris and he said I'm transferring to the Marines because they're, they're better. Oh, okay. So he transferred to the Royal Marines. And uh, I said, how, how come you um, didn't do the Special Forces thing and be in the SPS, the Special Boat Squadron, which is the Royal Marines Special Forces thing? And he said, oh, I did that. Yeah, I did that. He said, I went to the place and he did the course and uh, he passed. But he didn't actually join the SPS. He said that's one of the biggest regrets in his life. But what a guy, you know what I mean? He, we had personal reasons for not doing it, but it, he's the only person I know who's ever, ever passed the uh, Special Forces course. Because they all train in the same place, the Army and the, and the Royal Marines. Train in the same place. And the Army, if they qualify, they go to the SAS. And if the... Well, Marines qualify, they go to the SPS. I suppose they could swap. I, I don't know. don't know anything about it. He but, made me laugh because but he it, phoned us up in the lockdown. And he's dead good looking. He really is. He lo he's lo looks like Sean Connery, kind of. You've got to admit. No. You've got to admit, Roscoe's really good looking. And he was always clean shaven and had his hair nice. I'll tell you who he always and reminded me of. And he was dead me. vain. And Andy, that's why. Andy Stewart. Do you remember Andy Stewart, the Scotsman? He was yes, doing the, the, yes, the singing did. the songs. He, he was a dead spit of Andy Stewart. I'm sorry, Ross, if, if you're watching this video. <laughs> Honestly, if, if you watch Andy Stewart, you know, you and him. The not reason, the same, but... Roscoe, if you're watching this, the reason we're thinking of you is because you and Liz had your big, bir yeah, Liz yeah, had yeah. big birthday we party. We got invited here for, for, I think it was your wife's birthday. And I got into a huge row with Ivor the Diver Ivor over the Brexit. Diver. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he's all right with it. The man's hard enough to be called a twat. I was a very impressive guy, you know, because when we were in the boatyard and we were we were having to, the boat had been on the blocks and then the pressure washed it and it was all, we come back the next day, it's all dry and we've got to uh, roll at the bottom of the boat with anti -foul. We're all looking at each other and it's fucking windy and it's freezing, right? And we're all like going, oh, for fuck's sake. And Tim's there, right, well. Oh, Goldfin. All, and Roscoe just said, right then, well, I'll take the fucking windy side. And I was like, because nobody wanted to do the windy side, that was what we were all dreading. <laughs> Did he have streaks of blue paint? <laughs> fuck knows, but he didn't give a fuck. He had Does he wear... Did he wear a, I bet he wore a hairnet. He had waterproof flip flops. <laughs> Proper fucking guy. Really, only, really, really nice guy. Can't I only used to tease him because he was super good looking. I mean, he was probably a James Bond character. Super good looking and yeah. um, super cool. And he'd done everything and he kept his cool over everything. But I mean, he just, I, I could see sometimes he'd look at me, you know, when I had tension in the office that he wanted to kill me or snap my neck. <laughs> Um, He's one of those people who could just pick you up and snap you like a matchstick man and throw you away. <laughs> you think, whoa. And he fucking hated me calling him princess. <laughs> How you got away with it, I'll never know. Well, because I'm a girl and he was a gentleman. 
a gentleman and um he, and he still is and he's out there so don't oh, say yeah, anything negative the covid the covid thing so he phoned us up in the covid and he had let his hair grow like quite bushy and he had a great big bushy beard oh, he was with the, and i said yeah. to him you look like captain bird's eye and of course me in the lockdown my hair was everywhere and he went what's that lockdown hair fiona <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I never cared what I looked like before, Roscoe. You fucking care. Where's all your face creams for your psoriasis? <laughs> and you said to him, what causes psoriasis? And he said, stress. He said, um, first of all, what, what was the first thing he said caused him stress? Oh, that's right. His wife had cancer. She had, um, they picked something up in a scan. Um, breast cancer but it was small and it was dealt with very quickly and he said and then it went away and then he said my wife got arrested in Gibraltar and she didn't that was a big fucking thing it was all over the newspapers there then they'll know who he is <laughs> well there's the Ministry of Defence right the Ministry of Defence owned Gibraltar nobody has got a freehold property in Gibraltar. Well, there might be a few. There, are. there, there might are be a few. few. There are but there's few. not many. Up the rock. Most the... of them, it's all leasehold and it's all leasehold because <laughs> the Crown own it all. <coughs> Pretty much. Anyway, normally when you've got a civilian police and you've got Ministry of Defence police. Now, the difference here in Gibraltar is they're not called the Ministry of Defence police. They're called the Gibraltar defence police I think but it's the same same thing right and then you've got the <coughs> Royal Gibraltar constabulary with the, the civilian police so they are the uh, the uh, defence police they're they're in charge of military property they look like policemen you wouldn't tell the difference they've got police cars with blue lights and everything you, you know you, it's very difficult to tell the difference but they've got guns okay and the civilian police haven't Anyway, one day, on the see, every, people don't know this, but the, the airport at RAF Gibraltar is actually a Royal Air Force base. Now they allow civilian aircraft to operate from the Air Force base, but it is an Air Force base. So the security on the Air Force base is the uh, Gibraltar Defence Police, MOD Police, in other words, Ministry of Defence Police, and. Uh, a Ministry of Defence plane came in, landed, loaded up, refilled, turned around and it was about to take off and they, the civilian police drove onto the runway and parked their police car in the middle of the runway because they wanted to stop the aeroplane from taking off they wanted to arrest someone on the aircraft for questioning, for whatever, let's not go into it. Um, anyway. It's totally out of their jurisdiction. I mean, if that happened in the UK, the, the civilian police would be arrested by the Ministry of Defence Police. But here in Gibraltar, right, the uh, Gibraltar Defence Police came out and they're all cousins, they're all related. <laughs> they all know. Oh, no, it's not like that. It's they all like know that. each other. So, so the, 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 well, I'll give my version first, then you can give your version, right? So, base commander has said, Get that fucking police car off the runway now. There's a plane going to take off, right? And the uh, the police refuse to move. The 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 uh, our, the Gibraltar Ministry of Defence police turn up, and they're all cousins. And they're all going. What are we going to do? So it's a standoff. It's a Mexican standoff. No one wants to shoot anybody. <laughs> no one wants to arrest anybody. And the, the the civilian police said they had jurisdiction over the airport. And the Ministry of Defence Police said, no, you don't, it's a Ministry of Defence. Anyway, the big argument ensued, and to cut long story short, the aeroplane sat there for fucking hours, didn't take off. And in the end, the police took the guy off the aeroplane and arrested him and took him off for questioning. Ah, and then there was a big stink about who was, oh, if I can tell who my was, version quickly, who was hindering we, the police before force. Before we get to that. So let's go to Fiona's version of that. Avid Gardner reporting here from Gibraltar. Well, as far as I was concerned, on that particular day, Roscoe was crewing on the boat. Of course, his wife was the base commander, who was the one who made the decision. 
uh, me the Mexican standoff, and we were oblivious. You know, we were in Dolphin Safari World. We were just totally oblivious. And um, we had had several, I believe, hideous trips with no dolphins or with dolphins, I don't know, or people being sick. We'd had a very <laughs> stressful day, and I was largely unaware of this. We finally finished at about 8.30 at night, so it must have been the summer. And um, Roscoe said, Liz is in, has told me there's this standoff and the runway's been closed all of these hours. Nobody's gone home. And I, I was like, what? I don't care. I've got shit to do. I hope it's open in an hour when I fi finish shit to do in the office. And only a couple of months earlier, Roscoe and his missus, base commander, had been dancing on stage at the... Gibraltar Music Festival with Fabian Picardo, Chief Minister. And they were saying, oh, they're so lovely, you know, Gibraltarians and stuff. The Ministry of Defence rules the roost and stuff. And Graham and I had said, that is not the case. Gibraltar is self-governed. Don't believe that. Don't fall into that false sense of security at all. Gibraltar is, it's their playground, don't fuck with them. And he was like, oh, you know, MOD will rule. And the MOD did not rule. The MOD did not rule at all. The Gibraltarians did. Mm. And quite right too, actually, in a manner of speaking. So there you go. I think my battery's going to die soon. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I think it all got dropped in the end of the day, but... It was a big hoo-ha at the time. It was a huge hoo-ha, and uh, that was the last time we were in here, really, wasn't it? Yeah. It was uh, Liz's birthday party when you picked a fight with Ivor the Diver. I did, I picked a fight with Ivor the Diver, who was a huge Brexiteer. Welshman. And we, of course, along with 96% of Gibraltar, mm. are Remainers. But the other thing about Ivor the Diver was the, the, the special boat squadron train here all the time and yeah. Ivor was one of the instructors. Yeah, that's right, that's right. He's lovely, he's a guy from Wales and he's a fucking adorable and I love that guy. I love him so much. Gracias. Uh, Are you gonna, I'll get it, I'll get it. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. I've got it. I'll do it with the card. If the card doesn't work, I've got my card. Then we'll use the cash. Well, it's the same, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I can't even read that. Was it? One, two, five. <laughs> so clever the way these things work. I have to. Oops, uh, I need to delete. Uh, I need, um, more film. We're washing the dishes for a week if this doesn't work. Yeah, no. See. I just don't want any details, you know, those um Watch your scruff, yeah. Those, yeah. those trolls, fucking trolls, you know, sugars and, and shit like Sarah Data. They will do you know what? They will z steal a video shot oh, and they will zoom in to try and get your card details so you're gonna have to make sure that you edit all of that out okay, seriously well, seriously I'll, I'll give it a bit of a blur oh yes that that was part of what um youtube said to me in the email today they were giving me lessons on blurring stuff out on um my youtube channel i mean my god i i actually don't know how I've survived this long because I've done some outrageous videos, outrageous. I mean, never mind language, swearing, uh, saying shit, doing shit. Um, I've clearly got some very understanding people at YouTube.
who, I don't know. But I think the biggest attraction about YouTube is, is you know, people can be real. And yeah. If you look at the most successful programs, well, in the UK anyway, is soap operas. And it's about real life and real life people. And yeah. there's no superstars all dashing and fabulous and amazing with the most expensive cars money can buy doing super cool things. It's about normal people doing normal shit, you know, that we all do. And it's. Yeah. That's the beauty of YouTube. You, you can go on there and you can show your life how it actually is, you know, and with no pretense. I mean, the, the difference that's, that's, is, that's, that's yes, Coronation Street, Coronet, Corrie was, Corrie is, they reckon that Corrie, um, if aliens are out there in space, they will see the first transmissions of LC Tanner. Well, it depends they how reckon... far away they were, actually if the signal makes it that far, come on. No, they, the, the theoretical mathematicians yeah. have said, and Cory was well, an enormous, they had a big fight to get it going, but it was an enormous success. I think it's, it's success. really important because it was showing real life at the time. And I don't know, I haven't watched Coronation Street for 20 years, something like that. But, you never watched uh, it. I watched it on and off now and then. I did when I was bored. and. Uh, it's very good because that's what that was the most popular show on TV. You know, was was it was it was a soap opera about so-called real life and real life issues. Now For with me, YouTube, when YouTube comes along, what I'm saying to you is, is, is that this is real life. This is real life. This is how yeah. it is. Now, different people will have different lives and in different places and different. Yeah. And that's what's brilliant about it. You can follow people, or you, you don't have to. You know, I follow loads of people on YouTube. <laughs> I follow people who live on boats, uh, people who are fixing up old boats, because we've done that. Yeah. I, I follow people who live off the grid and, and all kinds of people. There's loads of people I follow on YouTube. Um, inspirational people. Inspirational people. You, you, you learn and so Foxy. much. And Foxy. Foxy. I'll tell you why I love Foxy so much. Go on. He is just so... Firstly, he's so kind and polite and gentlemanly. But there's an edge to Foxy. He is, um, he intrigues me in a, a manner of speaking and I feel it's a journey and Foxy in his own time. Foxy will be massive one day. He will. You he watch. will have millions of followers one day. There, there's something about the guy. I can see he's, I mean, our Benji, for example, if I show our Benji, Taz, Murky, Wally. He's not interested, that's not his thing. But I show him Foxy and Benji will sit down and he laughs and he says, I love this guy. <laughs> and he's so fond of Foxy. And there's something about that kid. I know he's 22, he's same he's, age he's got, as our he's daughter. Got, he's got something like 18,000 videos on this channel and he's been banging videos out for years and years mm. and years. Mm. And uh, he's been noticed. He's a sweetheart. He's been noticed. He's a character. He's a proper yes. English character. Lives in Brighton, right? And uh, he's been noticed. And yeah. words getting about, and his channel has just gone. Oh, and it's <laughs> yeah. going up. He's going to be massive one day. I think you watch. So. You will. And do you know, Graham loves him so much. I think he's brilliant. Graham, I think Graham's he's brilliant. the one who discovered him, and Graham's the one who. And um, when Graham's watching his videos, when he's on the telly, I actually see your face light up, and you completely <laughs> change. You completely change. Yeah, yeah. But you love him like a son. Well, I've taken him under my wing, shall we say, and I'm giving him advice. And his confidence has grown no end. Yeah. I've just watched it from like. And he's got videos going back, I think, to when he was 14. I birthday was watching. I was watching a video of him the other day, where he was in the Isle of Wight in y is it not, is it Yarmouth. I can't remember. But he was on a beach with his grandfather and his grandmother, and he must have been oh. a teenager. And he was just like, and you think, wow, the guy's put his whole life on YouTube. This is this is priceless. You, you it know, is. Keep going, Foxy. Just be you. This is brilliant. Just do what you do, and because that's real life. And it's thank real you life. so much for all the lovely videos, Foxy, yeah. that, that you've done. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, I can see. You're very, very fond of him, aren't you? 
Well, I, I started off just looking at videos of Brighton. I was watching Van Man. Remember Van Man? Was it oh, Van Mark. Man? Yes, Mark. Mark. Shout out to Mark. I love Mark. Van Man, Van Man Speaks or Van Man Talks? I subscribe. Something like that, yeah. He, he, he's got an electric Volkswagen van. He's lovely. And he's, he's, he's really funny. And he, he's one of these YouTubers who just drives around in a van delivering stuff. I think he's got his own antique shop or something like furniture shop. Oh, he's marvellous. Marvellous. He's, he's, he's got, he said he got an amazing deal. <laughs> An electric van, electric Volkswagen van. And let's face it, electric cars are not going to catch on, not at all. Um, they've sort of risen, but they're going to die. Really, it's a work really in fast. progress. It's working. There's nothing wrong with electric vehicles, but the batteries, okay, suck. They really suck. They're a fire hazard. So they really need to get a more, more safer. That's not really good English, is it? A better battery, a more, <laughs> a more safe, that's even worse. They need a good battery, not these ones they're using at the moment. Oh, right, that's my drink done. Anyway, I was watching him and that's how I came across Foxy because Foxy was doing <laughs> videos about Brighton and because me and Fiona, well, she's from Brighton. I, I lived in Brighton for many years and I was looking at stuff about Brighton. God bless so. Brighton and all, yeah. all the weirdos. <laughs> Brighton's full of weirdos, it always has been. That's where they go to crack up, but hey. We were the experiment. That's where all the, that's where loads of people go for sex changes and things like that, you know. Believe it or not, once upon a time, I was a, an attractive young lady in the 90s. <laughs> and the, the government decided to use it as an experiment and close various institutions. <laughs> Release them into the community and I met quite a lot of them sidled up to me. Would you like another vodka, darling? Uh, no, no, we're all right. We're working on yours. I'm walking home tonight. I'm walking home because I'll leave the car in the car park. I'll come back for it in the morning. You'll have to carry me. I'm fucked, man. I can't carry you. We'll get a taxi. We'll stagger to the border and get a taxi. No, let's walk down yeah, the beach. Be nice. Be romantic. It's gone dark now, look. Uh, because it's night time. That's why it's gone dark. It, as it tends to. Well, we were told to have a fun time. Someone gave us instructions to go and have a fun time, and that's exactly what we've done. Who gave us instructions? Well, that person knows who that is. Okay. I don't think she wants to be um, <laughs> illuminated, but if she does, I will. But if she doesn't, that's cool. I don't know what it is about alcohol, but... It's great alcohol, I love it. <laughs> but, uh, you know... When one is pissed... G&T goes straight to my head and I... Uh, one's brain flicks here, there and the other and... Um, you have amusing thoughts. Mm, mm. Anyway, we're going to wind this video up now. And we're going to wander home. I can see we'll make another, we'll make can another, see where this we'll, is we'll going. Make, We'll make another bit of a video along the beach on the way home, I'm sure. If we ever get home. We don't drop dead on the beach. Or <laughs> we'll just get pierced and pass out and never get there. <laughs> well, have you had a good birthday, darling? That's the most important part. Have you enjoyed yourself? Yeah, I'm still alive. I'm still here. So am I. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> I've got to end this with this Sky News thing I saw. Right, utterly tragic. Sky News did a whole thing on um, this girl from, I don't know, some girl. Stop it. The trolls will be fucking... They will. They'll be freeze framing. Freeze framing. Freeze framing. Oh, yeah, they'll be like freeze framing and everything. Oh, it's a lunar bar in Gibraltar. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, we live in La Linea, you know. Um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> 
Fiona is having a very good time. She's had a thoroughly nice time. As long as we get home safe, yeah, everything we will. will be fine. And then there's a bottle of champagne to pop. We've got two bottles home. of champagne in the bottom of the fridge, so we're going to carry on later. So this video might not appear until tomorrow because we might be too blathered <laughs> to edit it until tomorrow. But anyway, I was saying something. You, you lost your ring in the washing up bowl. No, nothing to do with that. We we'll have to rewind the video to find there out what it was. There are so many rules with well. you. Well. Yeah. Anyway, check out Gertie Rude. Gertie Rude. <laughs> Big shout out for Foxy, Gertie Rude. And who's the other one? I've forgotten now, but just check out Foxy and Gertie Rude. I'm sure there was someone else. Let's see if we can get home in one piece. In one piece. Hasta la vista, baby. Including wangers. That's the button. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. There. You, there. When you, you said have to... when you said including the W word, who were you referring to? Anyone we know? I've no idea, Millie. Millie. 